so let's have a look at blocking this sweater before we start blocking it i'm going to just show you something interesting i should have filmed this before i soaked it but i forgot so if you look here can you see this is on the wrong side of the lace can you see how it has these little like almost like mountain tops can you see that can you see that see how, how that looks so this kind of illustrates how much this lace actually needs blocking um, because you don't really want it looking like that although some people like it that's on the wrong side though on the right side it looks like that so it doesn't look as textured if you like on the right side so this sweater has lace on the back and then it has stocking stitch on the front normally i block a sweater with the front facing upwards i think i'm actually going to block this with the lace facing upwards it's got this lace pattern all over the back and then stocking stitch on the front and at the moment i don't know how easy it is to see this but if i kind of lay it out the at the moment the back is slightly smaller than the front um which it won't be once i've blocked it but um, because the lace kind of has pulled in a bit and I need to stretch it and then it'll stretch out to the same width as the front. There is, I think there is waist shaping on the front. Let me have a look. Um, yes, there is some waist shaping on the front as well. I didn't actually knit this when my sample knit is dead, uh, which is why I can remember because I wrote the pattern um, a month ago, six weeks ago. I don't know, a month ago probably. Okay, so to block this, I'm going to use uh, blocking wires. I'm going to use blocking pins. So there are these kind of padlock pins. I don't know. Can you see those? Hang on. I don't know. But they're like T-pins. Um, and then I'm going to use nip blockers. And they're all from Nipro. So, here's all the tools I'm going to use. You don't need all these tools. Um, what you do need is something that you can... Oh, a knitting... Knit, blocking mats is what they're called. They're from Nipro as well. Um, you don't necessarily need all these tools, but it does make the job a lot easier, that's for sure. Um, so, let me just move stuff around a bit so we can get started. So... What you want to do is place your sweater in the middle of the blocking board, just roughly like here. I may have to put one more on on the end here just to be able to stretch the sleeves out. So I would recommend um, that you either have the blocking wires and pins or the nip blockers. I use nip blockers and blocking wires and pens. You probably don't need the nip blockers if you have blocking wires. If you're going to get blocking wires or nip blockers, blocking wires are probably more useful. Um, although I do use my nip blockers a lot as well. So I'm not sure which way to block this. I think I'm actually going to do it the other way. So um, this way, because then it's a bit easier for me to see. My setup is slightly different. And this is the first time I'm actually blocking with this camera setup. And it's mainly because my other tripod broke. And I haven't decided whether to replace it or not yet. So um, I'll see whether I can work out how to lift my tripod up a little bit. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I managed to lift the camera up a little bit. Hopefully that will be okay. So what I'm going to start by doing is take one of these blocking wires now all my blocking wires end up slightly wonky but that's okay so i'm going to take it up inside the body of the sweater and try and work out where the center of the underarm is and take it out through the center of the underarm just because um that's easier you can take it straight up and out through the shoulder um but i find it easier to take it out through the center of the underarm and then I want to try and work out where the side of the sweater is so I wanted to line up with the lace on the side here so 
So I'm going to use one of these um, nip blockers. You can use pins for this. You don't have to use nip blockers. But I'm going to use nip blockers because that's easier. I'm also trying to line it up with the edge of this blocking mat because it just makes it easier to make sure it's a straight line. Okay, so I've actually realised that on the inside here, um, I've actually caught it on the strand of yarn. I'm not sure how I've done that. So let's just see if we can do this again. There we go. So you have to be careful when you go inside the fabric like I've done, so in between the two layers, then you don't catch it. I've still caught it on something, hang on. Because, um, right. let's just try. So the reason I'm taking it in through inside the tube that is the body is because it's easier. I'm going to come out through the top here. There's a yarn over right at the top, so I've just taken it out through the yarn over just to make sure I don't catch it on anything again. There we go. Okay. If you catch the thread on the back of this, so what I caught is, I've, so what I've done is I've caught the, this top layer of fabric, I've caught a strand on the back, and you can normally see it because you can see that it pulls in. You've got to be careful if you do that and just put your hand inside and just make sure that there isn't anything caught. Because if you pull it, you could end up breaking the yarn and that could be problems because it would be very difficult to, it would be very difficult to fix. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much to pull this down. I think that's probably about right. Um, you don't want to pull it too much lengthwise before you've pulled the widthwise as well. So even though I have um, obviously the length I want the garment to be, the most important thing is the width. Um, so if you pull something a bit too much lengthwise, it'll shrink up widthwise. And if you pull it too much widthwise, it'll shrink up lengthwise. So you have to decide really what's most important. So if you have a sweater that might be slightly on the big side, but you want it slightly longer, you can pull it a bit more lengthwise. This doesn't work that well with all stitch patterns, but it does work with um, some stitch patterns. Okay, so I'm going to just pin the shoulders. On the shoulders, I like to use the nip blockers. Um, I don't think you can see that. I will, I don't want to move my camera because. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Okay, so I'm just putting my nip blockers in at the shoulders. I don't want to move the camera too much because I've got a slightly precarious setup. Uh, but what I will do when I finish is that I will take it off the tripod and show you um, in detail what I've done. So don't worry about it too much if you can't see exactly what I did up there. So I've now kind of anchored the sweater at the top with the um, nip blockers and then I'm going to do this side so I just got to make sure that I find the edge of the lace and pull it out a little bit so if I remember from memory I think the stitch pattern the sweater has slightly fewer stitches on the back than it has on the front because the lace will stretch out a bit more okay i'm going to open another pack of nip blockers so the nip blockers come in two different sizes these wide ones and these skinnier ones and i prefer the wider ones for most things but they come in a mixed pack so Okay, I'm going to, before I stretch this out and finalise it, I'm going to just measure it to make sure that it's about the right width. Okay, so that's slightly wider than what I want it to be. But it will also 
probably shrink back a little bit so i'm not too worried about it being just a little bit wider than what i want it to be because it probably will shrink back a bit but it is the length that i want it to be so let me just check on this side okay so yeah so i got the length right so as i've anchored it at the top up there let me see if i can just move the camera back a bit so you can see the whole sweater okay so that's a bit better so you can now see where i've anchored it at the top with the nip lock is just got to try and make sure that the shoulders are level so i don't remember whether there was any short row shoulder shaping on the slope on the shoulders but they, they do still kind of slope a bit and then on the bottom here i prefer to use nip lockers you can use the blocking wire if you're going to use the blocking wire i would try and put it above the garter stitch uh, edging so there are two four six eight ten rows of garter stitch um i would try and put it above that i find if you put the wire in right on the edge it can look a little bit messy but i'm not actually going to use a wire i'm going to use uh, my nip block is because i find they're better for this kind of thing so i'm going to do them right on the edge and pull it out so i've got to try and make sure that it's level if you line it up at the edge of your blocking mat that might be better but i didn't do that so got to just try and make sure i level it it probably is easier to get a straight edge if you use blocking wires but i don't know i always find whenever i use blocking wires for this kind of edge it can be tricky to get it to look neat so i prefer to use um these nip lockers now you may have noticed that these nip lockers i'm putting them right next to each other so, so there's no gaps between them whereas these ones on the side i have put them so there are a few there are gaps between them um mainly because on the sides here i got the blocking wires that keeps the straight line whereas on the bottom here i don't have that so if i put these with like the gaps like i've done on the side you're likely to get scallops which i don't want the lace button actually does naturally scallop a little bit so if i had lace all the way around i could um exaggerate those scallops um but i don't want to do that because there are no um, lace on the front so i don't want the front to be scalloped okay so i think that's okay so i'm just going to double check the measurements before i go any further so that's all right and then i'm going to check from the shoulder yeah that's okay as well okay so sleeves left i don't tend to do anything around the neck um, you can put some of these nip blockers in if you're blocking it very aggressively you can put the nip blockers around the edge i don't sometimes i do sometimes i don't it just depends really but i think i need another one of those there now i don't know whether i said it before i started but i have soaked this in lukewarm water so i filled up my sink with lukewarm water and a dash of wool wash i use soak because it's a non rinse wool wash and then i soaked it for about 10 minutes and then i squeezed that as much water as i could being careful to support the weight of the sweater it's a size 10 so it's tiny really um i wish i'd measured it before i started blocking it because it was really tiny when i opened the parcel for my sample knitter i was a bit like oh, that looks really tiny but it has blocked out to the right size um Rolled up in the towels and squeeze as, squeeze add as much water as possible and then um, I've laid it out on the table. So you don't want it to be like sopping wet, but you don't want it to be nearly dry either. If you find that um, things drying takes too long, you can just spray it with water, but I don't know whether that'll be enough to really block out this lace properly. When it comes to soaking stuff, um, I've seen people, I saw somebody recently suggests that you should soak it overnight now in my experience that's just way too long 
Um, I find 10 minutes work for most things. If it's pure silk, then I might soak it a little bit longer because silk takes longer to soak up the water. This is a silk blend. It is either 15 or 25% silk. I think it might be 15%. So there's not a lot of silk in here. It's enough that you can feel it, but that's not a lot. The rest is merino wool, I think. Okay, so on this arm, I'm going to go inside this edge and out through the shoulder. Now, obviously, you're, you're um, blocking the sleeve flat, so you will get a crease here, which can be a bit of a problem. Actually, I'm wondering, it's quite smooth. I don't think, and it's stocking stitch, I don't think I need to really pin that. I'll just smooth it out. Now, that actually looks quite good. Um, I don't think I'm going to stretch that at all. Let's just measure it. Measures the right. If it's a little bit short and you want to stretch it a little bit, you can do. But it's stocking stitch um, and it looks quite nice and even. It's a really nice yarn. It keeps its stitch definition. It's very even. So I think I'm actually going to leave that. But if I was going to uh, pin it out, if it was lace, I would pin it out. I basically take the white inside the sleeve and poking it out through the shoulder. And then I pin it out and then on this side I tend to use my nip blockers and the nip blockers on, on that side. But I think I'm going to leave it actually because it looks quite good. If this sweater was all over stocking stitch then I wouldn't actually bother blocking it. I would probably just steam it or I might just soak it or spray it with water and then just smooth it out. It is a good, good idea to wash what you knitted. Mainly because when you knit it, you're obviously touching it a lot and it can get dirty, especially if it's a lighter colour. It can get a bit dirty. So I do think it's a good idea to wash it, but if this was just all of the stocking stitch, I would probably just, instead of blocking it, pinning it, I would probably just smooth it out and leave it to dry. Which is what I would do normally with a stocking stitch sweater if I hand washed it, or even if I machine washed it, I would lie flat to dry. Um, I'm very, very careful about machine washing hand knits. I'm just wondering about stretching out this section a bit. I've got another pack of my nip block is out, so I can use this big one. So I'm just going to stretch this section out a bit, just to make sure that this section is stretched out. Now, I don't particularly want to stretch the sleeves, but I do think it's a good idea to stretch this bit, just so that it stretches out the lace across the back because the lace was kind of curving in a little bit like that so if I stretch that out a bit it'll just make sure that the lace across the back top of the back also opens up like it does on the bottom so I think that's it that didn't take too long not too difficult so I'm going to leave that to dry and then when it's dry, I'll flip it over and just make sure I'm happy with it. And then um, what I tend to do once it's dry, hopefully tomorrow, I tend to um, hang it on my dress form um, at least for a few hours. I try and do it overnight if I can. And then I do all my final measurements. Obviously, if you're knitting this for yourself, you don't need to do the final measurements. But because I'm knitting this for a pattern, for a magazine um, I need to make sure that all my measurements are the same as what they are in the pattern and especially with lace things can vary a little bit compared to your swatch so I'm going to leave that to dry and I will film a video of it when it's dry to show you what it looks like um, when it's hanging on my dress form and let me just show you what it looks like from this direction, from the direction where I was sitting. So you can see I've got the nip blockers at the top, up down the side. Here I've put them closer together so I don't get it kind of pulling in in between them. But here there are gaps. I probably could only could have done with just three down the side instead of four. And then at the bottom, they are closed together. I might just have another look at this and make sure that it is completely straight. If I end up with this being slightly uneven, like I can see there's a little bit of a jump there, 
then what I can do once it's finished, when it's dry, is I've hung it up on my dress form for a bit. If it's um, looks the edge looks a bit uneven, I can just steam block it a little bit, and usually that'll sort it out. But I might just have another look at this edging and make sure it's okay. But yeah, I love it. Very pleased with it. I will show you what it looks like when it's dry and hanging on my dress form. So just a very quick look at the garment after I finish blocking it. So the front, in the blocking video you only see the back really, but the front is just plain stocking stitch. It's got a bit of waist shaping here and on the other side, a slightly kind of loose fitting, not very loose fitting, but um, hip length, three quarter length sleeves, got to stitch around the edges. Um, sleeves were um, knitted in. Um, so the sleeves are knitted from the top down and that's the back so it's got this lace pattern all over the back which you saw in the video so the sleeve stitches were picked up for the sleeves around the armhole and the sleeves are knitted from the top down so yeah i'm very happy with it it's been hanging up for about um, a couple of days now if you have any questions about uh, the video or about blocking do ask below um, and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I'll put all the links to where you can find this pattern uh, in the um, description below. Thank you very much for watching.